Hello everybody and welcome back to the Youth Academy Guys Lee Save on FM23 where we're diving into the first home game of season 18. We survived the championship in the first season. Spoilers if you're just tuning into this series. If you are just tuning into this series, leave a like and subscribe. And if you're here and you're not subscribed and you're enjoying the series, why not hit that subscribe button? But let's dive into the game and see what's happened in the off season. Spoilers, not very much. Yes, hello everybody and welcome back to FM23 with the Youth Academy guys, Leon Only Save. And I, I know I've said it in the intro, but please do leave a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content because this is such a good fun save. I sort of want to, it's making me want to run another save next to it as well, but I just don't think I've got time. So um, I've got an idea for the next save if this finishes before the end of the game or see what happens. But yeah. Let's dive in and have a look what's happened. So we are currently third in the table. One win from our first game of the season, beating Luton Town 2-0 away from home, which was lovely. We've also beaten Burton Albion 2-1 in the League Cup, which was really, really good. Um, yeah, we're up to third. Starting the season well, starting it strongly. Um, Norwich up next. They're our first home game of the season. They got relegated from the Premier League, which is going to make life a little bit tougher. But... It's looking okay. As I said, not too much to talk about in the off-season. If we go and look at the transfers, that's probably the best place to start. Again, just a number of loans going out. Those of note, Jeff Hogg, we've sent you out on loan for a season for first-team football with Sutton United. Um, Descende Marquez has gone out. Jan Petrick's gone out for first-team football at Warrington Rylands. So we've got a few people going um in terms of the back end of last season nothing else changed released players is always the interesting one malik priestnell we say goodbye to ye you were a superb servant for geisley a wonderful player but just wasn't getting any game time for us so um yeah he's gone we've got better options now at center back so he was a proper legend of the early part of this save and he will be missed but you know, you can't have sentiment in this save. You've got to just keep keep youngsters coming through and progressing. Uh, Caddy, we didn't realise. Lockyer, we never saw. Bertrand did leave us and has gone and uh, not found a new club. So he's probably regretting not signing a new contract with us because we wanted to keep him. But uh, yeah, he has left. No interest in him at the moment. Uh, 56 caps with Dominica, one goal. But yeah, left Geisley. He is done. And uh, that's about it really, in terms of outs, because not a lot else has happened. Um, there's been no free transfers, there's been no part exchanges, there's never been no player trials, obviously. Uh, loan deals, we've had loads go out, no cash, and then all transfers is just the loans that we saw. Staff-wise, we've bought in a couple of staff. Uh, model uh, perfectionist Michael Keating is joining our under-18s, um, just because he's a perfectionist, so that should rub off on the players. And Lydor Hudart, who is a model citizen, again, bought in for the under-18s just to be a good personality. Oh my god, he's born in Folkestone. I did not see that when I signed him. That's incredible. And he's English and Nigerian. Awesome. Love it. Lydor Hudart. But um, yeah, awesome. That is pretty much us up to date, to be honest. No changes. Um, the interesting thing about staff, our head of youth development, who is Jensen Weir, I don't know, there we go, he is now going to his profile, he got approached by Brighton to become their new head of youth development. Uh, he turned them down. He decided to stay with us, which was lovely. Um, thank you very much to him, Jensen Weir. This is the year that he's got to really prove himself, I'd say, as a head of youth development. He needs to bring in some good personality youngsters that's what he's here for that's what he's here for oh no there is news let's go and have a look at the um not there club info we'll come back to this page in a minute but club info facilities right we now have uh, basic corporate facilities below average training facilities adequate youth facilities exceptional academy coaching and above average youth recruitment we are still searching for our construction site of a new stadium which will be hopefully found pretty soon because a 12,800 seater stadium is going to do wonders for our income if we can get those turnstiles turning and letting all those people in so a few updates there but going back to the club vision if we look at the board you'll see here they have again agreed to improve the training facilities so we've got it done twice now so we've got the one in the summer that we saw at the back end of the last episode um and they're doing another one which is going to be completed in four months which is amazing very very happy with that so it looks to see it looks to be as soon as you get a little bit of money in the bank the board are then happy to basically spend it and invest it back in the club which is good there's not much else we can do in terms of 
um, requesting stuff. So nothing we can do there. Network, if we go senior affiliate, we'll ask again. Look, let's uh, do it to boost income. No, okay. After all I've done for this club, it's really important. We'll be left behind. There's lack of ambition. I'm very disappointed, but I understand. That's it. There we go. Uh, new shirts, obviously new season, new shirts. So we are lining up in a pretty basic white home kit for this season and a yellow with a little bit of a dash on it, which is uh, just a little touch of detail, which I quite like. Football 365 have been a good sponsor for us while we've been competitive and getting in the championship, so they stay with us. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Connor, I don't know why you don't have a face right now, but you don't have a face. So apologies. I don't know where your face has gone. But yeah, everyone else has a face. Even young Calvin Bambrook, who is now our high-rated prospect. But yeah, anyway, let's get into the game. We're going to go and play Norwich. They're coming to Nethermore to see how they're going to get on. Um, they're going to be playing in a 4-1-2-2-1, which is an interesting formation. Especially in the advance forward, they're probably going to try and ping balls in behind to him. But they're also a very good footballing team, even though they lost their first game of the season. But they got relegated from the Premier League, so they're going to be pretty good. Right, let's get into the game. Okay, what are we going to do in this game, I hear you ask? We are also going to play an advance forward of ourselves. We, I think they're going to come and attack us quite heavily, I think. So we're going to go wing-backs on support, wing-backs on support. We're basically going to try and hit them on the counter-attack so we won't focus play down the wings we are going to hit early crosses we're going to pass into space um, we'll sit fairly narrow in our attacking whip that's fine we'll play slightly more direct we'll probably give the ball back to them a little bit more we're not going to counter press don't distribute to the flanks we will not play a high line we'll go standard and drop off as well and we'll drop our thing back to we're at home but we'll drop to cautious anyway because i do feel like the natural pecking order would mean Norwich come and attack us. So we're going to try and sit back and launch on them after that. Right, in goal, Scott Lloyd, obviously. He is our first choice and best keeper at the club. Right back will be... It's a sort of a toss-up now between Kai Harding and Patrick Kaminsky. You know, Captain America. Where is he? Where is Patrick Kaminsky? Um, the other thing we could do is I've been contemplating playing Kai Harding further forward. Because he's crossing, dribbling and... Attacking attributes are a bit better. Do you know what? We're going to do that. Kaminsky is going to start at right back. Right centre back, we're going to go with Johnson and Jones. They they formed a decent partnership last year. Joe P will get back in the team. Don't worry. Left back will be Stuart Faulkner. Ball winning midfielder in the middle will be... Should be Lewis Salt. But I've got a feeling Supreme Dave may be quite close to overtaking Lewis Salt. But we'll start with the club captain. In this game, Lewis Salt will be in there next to Connor. You'll get in the start as the playmaker now that Hanif Bertrand has gone. Um, the faceless Connor. Uh, inverted winger on the right will be... We will, yeah, we will. We're going to try it. Where's he gone? Where's old... Uh, what's his face? Kai Harding. There you are. Um, in Garnch, obviously Graham Cox. And on the left-hand side, we will start... Hmm, this is interesting. Shane Stitt's probably the best one to start out there, but... Amiri Classy did have some good games. We're going to go with Classy, and we're going to put Cameron Thorpe through the middle as an attacking forward. They don't like playing in these roles. They don't like playing in these roles. I'm sure it will be fine. Chris Veeran, all press, Stitt. Jimmy Curran's injured. Supreme Dave goes on the bench. We'll have Kwame and Beaker, who is a guy called up from the youth team, pushing for a starting left-back spot. He's uh, growing quite a lot this season, which is good to see. We'll have Max Whittam on the bench, and we'll have Joe P on there as well no goalkeeper as normal that's how we're setting up for this one so let's get into it i'm i'm excited a bit nervous about playing norwich i think they're going to be a pretty good team yeah I, I the only what keeps happening in my head is how easy would this game have been if we could just buy the players i want like i feel like the game is a lot easier when you just buy players you want but this has been a tough challenge don't get me wrong it's been very very difficult i want to win every match I mean, that should, that's a given, right? I'm a football manager. I want to win every match that my team plays in, right? Last thing to do, opposition. Central midfielders go and get um, pressed, tackle hard and showed onto foot. The holding midfielder will get our attacking midfielder to tightly mark him and tackle him, show onto his weaker foot and try and mark the striker as best we can. Awesome. Not much else to do, not much else to say. 
Let's get into it on uh, what appears to be a massive pitch at Geisley because I'm really zoomed in. 4-2-3-1 for us. We know it. We love it. And uh, they're lining up in a 4-3-3 DM. So it's going to be an interesting game. I'm expecting to lose. I'm expecting to lose. Whether I'm expecting to lose heavily, I'm not sure. But I feel like setting our team up to counter-attack probably is the correct thing to do. We just need to see if the, uh, if the players can actually do that. I've just realised what's going to happen is this is going to be very, very fast when it comes on because that's why I've been playing the games a little bit. We're going to stay in 2D as well. Um, it looks like our sort of more defensive shape is working because we're creating chances and not getting many highlights for them. Classy can't pick up Hussein into Priest behind Johnson. and That's got to be a goal. It is a goal. Gillen was always going to score that one when he was 3-1-1. One and one. Um, If he didn't score it, I would have been a bit surprised. But a very... Uh, Jones with a good header. Hussein picked it up. This little ball just around the corner. That's where our defence is a little bit weak. Just on the... Um, sort of on the turn. Acceleration, I guess you would put it down to. But I don't... Oh, Connor. You're literally like our... Right, we're going to have to change it up a little bit here. Because Supreme Dave wants to be a ball-winning midfielder. So let's go for our... What we, this is normally what we would implement against a 4-4-2. So let's see how it works against a 4-3-3. My concern is that going to this pushes our back line up e higher than it should be or higher than I want. It's that He looked offside. Gillam looked offside. He looked offside. He's not offside. Wow, he looks so far offside. Hussein's there. When this ball comes in, Kaiser gets it. I mean, I mean, has he has he kept that on? So if we go like play pause, play pause. That's the that's the part he's well onside, Dave. What are you on about? Definitely onside. Really good first touch. That's a Premier League quality first touch, and it's past Lloyd before he can even react. So now we're going to have to go positive. Oh, we were doing well. We had some momentum. We'd got in the game, and now it's all been Norwich. As we uh, get to the end of the first half. Faulkner with a throw in. Into Harding. Harding cuts a sort of shoot. Oh, Thorpe's hit the post. For well, Thorpe was off. No, it's a goal kick. He wasn't even offside. It's hit the post. He's, that's so unlucky. It's a great effort. It's a great little effort. Um, I want to say we're in the position we deserve to be. I'm not going to... We're going to be a bit hard ass this year, I think, for performances. So Harding, it's not really worked out with you at right wing. Maybe if we do drop these back just so that our line isn't so so high up, but we go two ball winners on support to try and still chase down the midfield too. Uh, I do feel like we need to make that change because it's not working. Stit on, and we're going to go to inside forwards on both sides. Both players have better stats for an inside forward there, so let's, let's crack on. I don't want to push the line up just yet because I feel like that will make us very susceptible to a ball over the top for what is a... Probably a very good quick striker in Gillam if they're playing as an attacking forward or advance forward. But we've got a corner. Cox swings it in. Jones with a header. Hits the side netting. Not bad. I mean, we are having the better of the second half according to momentum. But Gillam over the free kick. It's wide and does not go in. We drop down a 13th, which again isn't is 12th, which isn't dreadful. But 20 minutes to go. We'll look to bring on... Some fresh legs. Salt with it. Went over the top. Stitt's going to get there first. He's into the box. He's hit the bar. And we've hit the woodwork twice in this game. Oh, that is really, really irritating. Um, we're going to do fearing on for Thorpe. Classy up front. Fearing over there. Stitt on the left. Cox not having a great game. But yeah, without... Mm, Hanif Bertram was the other player that could fill in there. But he's not around anymore. Faulkner off. We're going to give a debut to Quam MBK. Coming on for a massive game against Norwich. And yeah, look at this second half. We've definitely had the better of it. Just not taking our chances. Again, I just want to see something that we can take a positive performance away from against a relegated team would be brilliant. Uh, Johnson's playing better. So Jones off, Joe P on. Switch those two over because Johnson is uh, preferably left-footed as well. But with a couple of minutes to go, good performance. Just lacking that killer that killer quality that Norwich have shown today. I don't think they've really created too much. They're going to dominate the XG. But really, the two chances, I don't think were brilliant. 
So I'm not too upset about that. If we had dominated, look, we've dominated there. Just didn't take our chances. Hit the woodwork twice. So it's a little bit disappointing. But um, look, you did yourselves proud. They want the tough love this year. Our players want the tough love. So they're going to get it. I mean, yeah. I probably should have said that was a bit rubbish because we were at home. But I think losing 2-0 to a newly, a newly relegated team isn't that bad, to be honest. Connor, you're out for three to four weeks, which is an absolute disaster. Um, we come unstuck. Media shy manager Dave Nichols joined Geisley in 2023. He's been in charge for 17 years. Bloody hell. Um, press conference. Let's uh, Responsibilities. We're just going to delegate those now. Because I always just press send assistant. Because there's so much other things to do in this game. Press conferences are the least of my worries. So, a little bit disappointing. Um, I think hitting the woodwork twice is sort of a... You know, you can look at that and think if you put those away, it's 2-2. Two -two. So, right. But we do have some disciplines to hand out. So, discuss. Discipline player for poor performance. One day's wage for Thorpe. And we'll go classy on a six is going to get... Uh, why can't I discuss? Why can't I discipline you? That's annoying. Uh, you got a 6.0. I definitely should be able to discipline you. Oh, that's the wrong game. That's why. It automatically went back to the last one. Um, so 6.1 was Cameron Thorpe. Kai Harding on a 6.2. Discipline player for poor performance. One day's wage. Very irritating that it goes back to a different game. 1.2. 6.3. Let's give Faulkner... Discipline player for poor performance, one day's wage. Hopefully, they're all going to be happy with... Well, not happy, but accept it. So, yeah, he accepts it. Uh, said he needs to motivate himself. Said he needs to motivate himself. Says he needs to motivate himself. Good going. Right, we do have some pretty good um, personalities coming in the team now. Professional, balanced, fairly professional, ambitious, resolute, balanced, realist. Uh, spirited, professional, professional, resolute, professional, lighthearted. Balance, balance, professional, unambitious, unambitious, unambitious. Balance, professional, balance, professional, spirited, ambitious, professional. And if we go down to the under-21s, again, more good personalities than bad. Professional, balanced, ambitious, professional, professional, unambitious, deter low determination. Light-hearted, balanced, unambitious, professional. Fickle, probably the worst one. Um, unambitious, balanced, realist. Realist? Another realist. Uh, balanced, unambitious, fickle, mercenary. Fairly professional. And then in the under-18s, which is what we're expecting our new head of youth intake to bring through. Temperamental, temperamental is not amazing. Light-hearted, we're going from bottom up this time. Mercenary, fickle, fairly professional, balanced, fairly professional, ambitious, balanced, casual, unambitious, mercenary, balanced, unambitious, unambitious, light-hearted, finishes fickle, resolute, unambitious, temperamental, unambitious. I mean, reading through that, it seems there's more worse ones than there is good ones, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But that is the start of season 18. Um, again, pre-season's... Pre-season started dreadfully, by the way. We lost 4-0 to our rivals, Halifax Town, uh, then won 6-0. Lost 3-1 in Lewis Salt's testimonial. Beat Albion Sports 7-1. Drew with Dergview away. Beat Bright uh, Drew with Brighton. Drew with Aston Villa. Beat West Brom. Won the Money Please Cup. Beat Bradford. Lovely. Um, yeah, so we've got Sunderland in the next round of the EFL Cup. We've got, let's play it, we'll play a few more games. Um, we'll probably come play it by ear when we come back. We will come back sometime in October or November uh, and see how we're getting on. But um, this year, I'm just hoping to build a little bit more in the championship, be that little bit step further away from relegation and see how it goes. But thank you so much for watching. Please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, leave me a comment. I will respond and read to every single comment. So thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.